Our next speaker is with ASTM International. It's uh, Jeff Atkins. <laughs> Does this keep going? There you go. Oh, man, what a picture. Oh. I liked it because it brought out my eyes. But <laughs> I know you guys are a tough crowd. This is really exciting stuff, standards work. <laughs> But I'm trying to, I'll do my best, okay? Like it says here, I'm Jeff Atkins. I've been with ASTM for 15 years. I'm not a technical person, and I manage a wide variety of technical committees. So ASTM, what is ASTM? ASTM is a, you heard the SDO earlier, a standards development organization. It's been around since 1898. It actually started when the railroads were coming across the United States because they had to develop standards for the steel that was being used in the railroads. So that's where ASTM got its initiation. Its first committee is ASTM A1, it's Committee on Steel. Okay, something was mentioned earlier and I've been waiting ever since, you know, the ANSI guy talked too long too, but I, I've been waiting to say this. Somebody mentioned earlier, and I won't say who it was, but that ISO and the IEC were the only international standards development organizations in the world. Uh, she's trying to qualify it now, but. <laughs> But ASTM has worked very hard, in all seriousness, to become an international standards development organization, and they have been for a number of years. ASTM used to be known as the American Society for Testing the Material, and they changed that name back in 2001. And there's the World Trade Agreement is written as such that there's certain criteria that people have to meet to become an international standards development organization. And ASTM has met all that criteria and continue to work that. And ASTM is a not-for-profit organization, but it gets sustains itself through the sale of its intellectual property, through the sale of its standards. And more than 50% of its sales of its standards are outside of the United States, which is, and it's been that way for many years, but it has that stigma associated with it because they see the A and think that's American. So, okay, there's my soapbox for ASTM. Is my time up already? <laughs> I know. I apologize. We have more than 13 or 12,000 standards that ASTM has. Something I like to highlight, you know, I come back, I first got out of the military and I went to work selling aluminum. And I saw ASTM standards stenciled across it, ASTM B something or other. We did a tour earlier today. We went into the, uh, one of the labs, which, structures, structures lab, thank you. And there was a steel beam there and it said it's ASTM A500. So it's made to ASTM specification. You go into TGIF Fridays, you go into Ruby Tuesdays, you pull out that little box of crayons that you guys probably still color with because you're all in college. And it'll say conforms to ASTM D4236. So that's an ASTM standard, although they're voluntary consensus standards that was adopted into law, that if you're gonna sell an artist material, it has to be labeled if there's any health hazards or such. So you'll see it everywhere. I, I put a swimming pool in my house a number of years ago. The sales brochure had an elephant standing on top of a safety cover, and it said conforms with ASTM 1536. So you'll see ASTM standards everywhere. Uh, we are across borders, across every, we provide everything. Safety is a primary concern. You know, standards facilitate trade, so it's important to use those. And all throughout the tour today, we saw that ASTM standards are used quite a bit. What I wanted to highlight here, just is pretty simple, you hear the word standard and everybody thinks, what's a standard? Well, in the ASTM world, there's six different types of standards, all of equal value, none has more weight than the other, but we have classifications, guides, practices, specifications, terminology standards, and test methods. Probably the most far-reaching standards that ASTM has are the test methods. And ASTM test methods are recognized internationally because they have a precision and bias section that shows how accurate they are to be used and how if they're properly used. And I think that separates us away from or separates us from many other standards development organizations in the world. Am I there? One more okay. <laughs> and we were going to talk about students and stuff, but I got carried away. Um, ASTM has made a, a big effort over the years to get involved with academics. We recognize professors, the year of the professor and do different things. We provide a, a toolkit for professors to use, whether they use videos, PowerPoints, and different things to promote ASTM's use, and we can get special packages where they can use ASTM standards in their teachings, in their classrooms. Student membership, just to be real quick, anybody can join ASTM, like was mentioned earlier, to join that organization that doesn't recognize international organizations, that 
there's, but there's all kinds of things that can be involved. There's benefits. And on a serious note, just to highlight a couple of things, there's things here that we say we got some uh, uh, grad, uh, grants and scholarships. Fortunately, for some folks here at Case Western, and it's because they're well-deserving, there were a number of applications, but both Motion and Janet received $10,000 scholarships from ASTM this year. So, and actually Motion's a report, re repeat winner because he got it as well last year. So, and that's a result of their efforts and their work here at Case Western and their involvement with ASTM. Okay, just real quick, these are the committees I mentioned, or I, I, I manage, and you can see they're all over the place. We talk about metals, talk about paint, air quality, and just dimension stone, granite, slate, marble, stuff like that. So, whoops, we'll go back. He's next. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it.